In this quick tip, we're going to learn how to build nav bars with the new responsive controls. A nav bar sits at the top of your app's page and adds control for the navigation of your app. To build this, we'll make a reusable element and upgrade it to new responsive. Both our page element and our reusable element have new properties for their width and height controls. With the new engine, we no longer force you into any one particular width or height. For the sake of building in the editor to compensate for your screen size, you can define the width of the page by setting this width for UI builder property. In this case, I'll use 1000 pixels. But really, in run mode, your page width and height are controlled by setting their min and max values below. For this, we have max width and height as infinite, and to make it more navbar-like, we'll define the min height to be around 70 pixels. There are a couple ways that we can structure this navbar, so we're going to look at a few of them. The first way, and arguably the easiest way, is to set the container layout to align to parent. We can add a logo pinned to the left middle non-ant, and a button pinned to the right middle non-ant. When we resize the reusable element, they stay pinned, and just like that, we have a very simple navbar. If we wanted to add more buttons, we could group them together and give this group its own container layout. Here I've given this group a row, since child elements will be placed horizontally, and it gives us extra alignment control. Finally, we can select these buttons and space them out inside the group by giving them margin. Since we have both selected, we can apply the margins to each element simultaneously. With these buttons grouped, we then pin the group itself to the right middle non -ant. Keep in mind that no matter what we do, child elements of an aligned apparent container overlap, so the elements don't push as you shrink to smaller viewports like they do in a row. This means that you'd have to hide and show things with conditionals to clear space for different designs. With aligned apparent, navigations that were previously difficult to do like this one, with an icon on the left, a logo in the middle, and a button on the right, can be achieved in a matter of seconds. Building a navbar with aligned apparent is a great way to get started with your app. However, that does not mean it's the only way. Another approach to make a navbar is to set the reusable element container layout to row. With our logo and group of buttons, we can align them using the row's container alignment controls. Because the reusable is a row, and the group holding our buttons is a row, elements will push each other and wrap onto another row as the page shrinks, giving us a graceful, responsive experience. By mixing and matching container layouts and experimenting using alignments and widths, Building nav bars has never been easier. That's it for this quick tip. For more, be sure to check out Bubble Academy.